Um, and Jennifer Fearon, would you like to join us and say something? No longer on the formulary. Oil paint, health insurance letters, and subjects artwork. 24 inches by 24 inches, 2016. The head and shoulders of a man face us. He has a pale complexion, dark hair, thick brows, and dark eyes. And he wears a blue shirt. His nose and mouth are covered by an oxygen mask. A silver clamp is near the bridge of his nose. Thin green bands stretch to his ears. A clear plastic valve and tubing hang under his chin. Gray vapor escapes from the mask by the bridge of his nose and swirls above him. The background is gray-blue at the top and bottom and white on either side of the man's eyes. Bits of text and numbers laid out in labels are visible beneath the paint. Um, sure. So uh, it's been interesting listening to all of you. I am not a disabled individual myself. Like Penny, I'm a mom and raised a now 26-year-old son, one of my three children, who has multiple issues with it, that he's dealt with in his life. And I, like um, Moshri, I didn't start out as an artist. I started out in the finance world as well. But I stayed home to raise my son and started painting as an outlet. And pretty soon he became one of my frequent subjects. Um, I saw him, and it's been interesting listening to all of you describe, um, you know, how, how, what it's like to be seen or not seen as an individual with a disability. And I, he quickly became just a person to me. My, you know, I had three kids, he was one of them. And I really um, got very involved in wanting him to be seen just as an individual, just another person. And I started painting him um, in various states of his life. And then I started showing the work in my studio in Sausalito. And I started talking to other people about this project and so began to paint um, other individuals. And I chose a formal portraiture style because to honor. That's an art tradition that honors um, famous people or people of great stature. And so I chose that art form to paint these formal portraits of people living with different life circumstances. And um, I chose to include different things. My experience as a mom was that there was so much involved in this person's care. There was um, the, the health insurance company, I'm sure you all have that lovely experience and um, all the medications and the pharmacy and the you know doctor's appointments. And I was just blown away by how much work there was in, in caring for him and helping him to grow up. And I, so I included a lot of those um, alpha, you know, alphanumeric documents like his portrait, one of his portraits is on letters from the insurance company or which was really frustrating for me at the time. And because they kept taking his medications off the formulary like they do. And, you know, I got really mad and, you know, painted a portrait about it. And for other people, I chose to have them share with me. Uh, that's the one of him painted on the letters from the insurance company. Um, and it's called no longer on the formulary because that's what they would say when I would call and say, you know, what happened to this medication that he needs to live? How come you're not covering it anymore? And they would say, well, ma'am, it's no longer on the formulary. And so I would say, may I please speak to your manager and write, write letters to the State Board of Insurance and all that sort of thing that one has to do to, to advocate. But I did start painting other people and it was really tricky for me. You know, I, I, as a person, there's this issue of now of um, cultural appropriation, right? And I'm a mom. And I felt really close to my own son, but I did have um, this little nag in the back of my mind that, okay, but I'm not a person living with a disability. So should I be portraying these people? And I just, I came to peace with it because as an artist, I think one of our jobs, and I became an artist later in life, um, is to tell a story. And you, what we do is tell our, a story the way we experience it and then portray that for others. And so, you know, I decided and I, and the subjects that I painted, I, I became, I talked to them and interviewed them and did photo shoots with them. And they were usually friends or people I knew. I didn't approach strangers. They were people I already had a relationship with. So, and they were okay with me telling their story and were actually happy to have me paint their portraits. So, I felt all right about that. And I'm, I'm happy with the way the pieces have turned out. And I've completed 
no, five or six of them now. And I have one more I'm still finishing. And then um, uh, I'll be finished with this series of, of uh, that I call Uniquely Human. One of the things that I really like about what you're doing is that you're including things like the insurance letters and that yeah. layering of the experience. And that's what made you start doing that? Well, I think because it is a complex experience and in through just uh, visual art, it, or an image, it's hard to portray that. And I felt like it needed to include um, something more. I'm also really inspired by uh, Mark Bradford's work. He's, his work is, uh, he's a you know, Los Angeles artist who does abstract work, but it's a layering of, of many different artifacts from life and then scraping away or painting over them. And I think that's how life is. And that's how an individual experience is. It's not just two dimensional. It's the layering of all of the things that go into your daily experience and um, your individuality. And so that's, that's, it's more complicated than just a flat image, you know? And so I was trying to include some of that. I think if I weren't a painter, I'd be a writer because there's so much to say about individual experience. One of the things that, uh, how I judge art is whether it's an insider's perspective or an outsider's perspective, because you're clearly involved in this world. And so- For many years. <laughs> yeah, and it works, you know? And so it's, and it's not about cultural appropriation because uh, we haven't even agreed there is a disability culture, let alone anybody can appropriate <laughs> it, so. Well, there's a disability experience. Yes, but absolutely. it's individual. It's 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 each individual has their own experience. But it's also collective. That's the thing. That is the shift that happened in the 1950s and 60s was to a collective view of disability that we share these experiences, and so I think the work that you're doing, you know, I mean, I think great art oftentimes is taking the particular. And then they, it, 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 it talks to the broader issues. Universal. Yeah. And so you take the particular, and it is universal. And because we're, it's 2020 and Laura's doing the work she's doing, we can l see this as a collective. You know, it, it, it's contextualized that it might not have been 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. And thank you. And thanks, Anthony. I really appreciate it.